Let's see if this is as bad as the X1. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank, and today we are unboxing the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus? I thought it was the Pro. Guess it's the Plus. And I'm gonna preface this entire video by saying I'm not a big fan of Artillery. I tested their X1 a long time ago back in England, and I kind of hated it. There was too much proprietary software, hardware on it. They made some weird choices with the cables and connectors, and when things break, it was harder to get a hold of it. Now, that was a while ago. I skipped the X2, I skipped the X3. Did they even make an X3? But today, they sent me the X4 Plus because I want to give it a shot. It's come a long way. Just look at Bamboo and Creality and how far they've come. I want to do an unboxing and overview of the X4 Plus, and we'll get like a couple prints off of it, and then you'll see it in other videos. But yeah, let's just jump right into it. Cool. Ah! You saw nothing. I haven't used this in a while. Ha <laughs> ha! Now, I am gonna be honest, I know very little about this printer because I haven't kept up with artillery. So I am anxious to be pleasantly surprised. It can be had for the low, low price of whatever's on the screen right now, because I didn't even look that up. But I am excited about it. People have sent me messages on Instagram asking me to review this. Hey, have you seen the new X4, the X4 Plus? And we're gonna see how it holds up. So let me just let me just get everything out of the box. All right, I have everything laid out here. Some things of note. First, the build quality and construction already feels way better than the original X1. Uh, everything seems pretty good. They got rid of the uh, ribbon cable thing. I, I, I think I haven't actually figured out what is quite going on here yet in terms of power and electricity. Oh, it's gonna be a cable. Okay, good. I like this. This is very similar to the Neptunes. So it's just gonna plug right in. It's a direct drive. Um, it has a nice tensioned um, Z belt dual axis. Uh, sync cable, whatever the heck you want to call it. Everything seems nicely constructed. The connectors seem good. There is a chunky uh, bed cable back here. I like this material. Hopefully this doesn't have any issues, or I can't see this having any issues close to what the Bamboo A1 had with the power cable having that little recall issue. It is very nicely laid out. Uh, comes all the way back, goes all the way forward. I do appreciate that. The whole printer is designed nicely. Has a nice bed, has a nice little wiper spot. Everything is okay. It has really cool um, stabilizing carbon fiber rods. What I do not like already though, leveling paper? It's, it's 2024. Why? Th th this, this should be gone. This already, I do not like this. Um, I think we are well past the realm of needing to manually level anything at all. If the K1s, the K1Cs, the bamboos, if they can do it, um, even actually some of the Neptunes, I don't think I even had to do that on my Neptune 4 Max, I don't even know. Th this is a non-requirement. We're gonna see what the leveling system looks like uh, when we boot it up. It does have an inductive sensor here that is, that should be okay, uh, I hope. Um, I don't like inductive sensors, but that's just off of my own history. So that's not great. The only other thing that scares me too, it has a glue stick. Bed slingers, in my opinion, do not move fast enough for you to need glue sticks. This is a pretty nice textured bed. It feels good. Uh, this is very similar to the beds I have on my K1 Maxes that don't need glue, which is great. So we'll see how the first layer adhesion is. It does kind of suck that they only give you a little bit of filament high-speed PLA. So this thing does print fast or it wants to print fast. I understand that. But it, 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 for, the, for the money, for the price, you should be able, you should get a roll. Like there's room in the box for a roll of filament, even though artillery doesn't make their own filament. Um, but yeah, everything else looks good. Everything is clearly labeled out. Pretty size, nice, decent touch screen. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, artillery is shopping at the same place that uh, Elgo is, because this feels like, this feels like the exact same screen, if I'm being honest. Yeah, so let's get to building this. Okay, so here it is constructed, um, not too bad. I'm not actually sure how long that took to build. It felt like 20-ish minutes, so not too crazy. Um, I'm gonna be honest, this builds exactly like an Elegoo Neptune uh, series printer, which really isn't that big of a deal. Um, my two complaints, I guess, so far, in terms of the construction quality or just things I noticed right off the bat, the, the way the cable is secured, they use uh, this clip thing, and you're supposed to pinch the cable and roll it. 
I just feel like there's a better way to do that. Honestly, getting this screw in took longer than most other things on the printer. I did have an issue with the print head hitting the bed as I was trying to get the gantry placed on it. All you have to do, make sure you cut all the zip ties and then you can spin the X, uh, the, the Z axis rods, spin them up. You can grab the cable just to lift the gantry up. This way the print head isn't touching the bed. Aside from that, went together really easily. The instructions, super easy to follow. You guys shouldn't have any issues uh, building it. And now I am excited to turn it on for the first time. Let's find out. Oh yeah, the little drawer in the front, um, not, not the best construction quality, uh, and it doesn't fit all of the tools. I just, I feel like you could have made it a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, not the, not the end of the world by any means. Uh, this is the weirdest scraper I've ever seen, but this is also a flex bed. So you shouldn't need this anyway. And then our trusty blue nippers. So, uh, yeah, those, those haven't let us down yet. Comes with an extra nozzle. It comes with all the little extra little tools and stuff. So let's get this thing fired up. See if I actually have to level it. Uh, I'm not gonna be using their little test sample of high-speed PLA. I'm gonna grab some other high-speed PLA that I can actually send a real print with, not this little test guy, so whatever. It's detecting things. So, so I have to go through a manual leveling with it. Um, losing a lot of points, artillery. I will do it, we're gonna do it. I'm gonna be good at it, but I'm not happy. Okay, after some Pretty easy calibration, follow the thing. Um, I actually didn't do the corner leveling. I just did the the, 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 the automatic leveling. And I'm just gonna kind of see just how on level it is because it should have bed, it has bed mesh. So we're just gonna see how wacky it is. Just full send. I loaded up some filament. So let's go ahead and reach around here. Let's, let's send a print. Let's see what's on. Oh, we got lights. Oh, it has lights. It's actually, okay, cool. I can live with that. Uh, print, what is on print? Print, that. Um, okay, artillery slicer, model file. It's thinking. Oh, it's like, uh, yeah, print that. We're gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna actively level it while it prints, and then I think we're gonna do a little jump into the future after that. I'm just gonna get prints off of this thing, and we'll review if I had issues. Um, I'll do little clips, but I think I'm just gonna start sending every print I can to this thing, and just seeing, seeing how it does over the next day or so, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up the video. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. It, it's, it's, it's a printer. Okay, that actually didn't, I didn't do anything. Um, it, it did its self level or whatever, and it's actually printing out just fine. Um, obviously this is a very small print in the center of the bed. I don't know if the corners are unlevel. So I think I'm going to, once this is done, I'm gonna load up my own file that at least maybe like a leveling check just to see how off level it is right from the box. I haven't adjusted anything. Um, this is a natural semi-clear PLA. It said natural, but it's like a white high-speed PLA. It's coming out a little thin, but it is a pretty decent first layer. So we're gonna let her go and just see what happens. So the first print is off the bed. It printed pretty nicely actually, just a little bit of weird stringing and that could be just from this really generic, natural, no name brand PLA. I do wanna throw some other stuff at it, but I am happy I didn't have to level it. Uh, I just let it do its little leveling sequence anyway. Um, this the initial Z offset and it kind of takes you through that so that's easy. But uh, there definitely was some black filament in the extruder when they sent it, so they did test it. So it pushed that out. Um, adhesion was great, first layer was great. It was stuck very nicely. I checked when it was still warm, it didn't want to come off, the bed cooled down, popped right off. Great to see. So uh, pretty good so far. No complaints in the quality and the function of the printer. It was a little bit slower than I had, I had thought. This, this definitely took a little bit longer than uh, I had imagined something like this would. But uh, we are gonna throw some more prints at it. I'm probably gonna do like a Flexi Rexy or something. Something that's gonna take up a lot of space. This is a general unboxing and overview. I'm not gonna spend a week or two beating this up 3D printers work now, and that's great to see. The things you're not gonna like about them are just cable management, design, and build quality. Really, I was always expecting this thing to work pretty well. It's the X4. I mean, artillery's been at it for a while, even if I had gripes with the original X1. That's totally fine. So let's throw some prints at it, see how they come out, and we'll wrap this video up. So it's the next day, and I am temporarily Canadian. And I got three prints off the X4. And, well, here we go. I don't like it. Um, I printed a two Flexi Rexies and right off the printer without adjusting anything, they're, they're kind of fused together. For context, this one came off of the new Ender 3 V3 and this is what they're supposed to do and sound like. 
The tolerances that this printed on aren't great and it's just standard white PLA. It, it shouldn't, need, shouldn't need any calibration. So this was very disappointing. Now I can sit here and kind of flex and crack it apart and get it to break up, but that's not the point of printed places. So the tolerance is that this is thing, this thing's already putting out for $380, $480, $430. There's a lot of numbers going on. Um, this was a letdown. This was a big letdown. One of the first prints I sent it, it didn't deliver. Unfortunately, not to also mention the high speed printing or the fast printing it offers, in the time it took to do one Rexy on just standard settings, I was able to do two medium Rexies and one small on that same Ender 3 V3, which is also a bed slinger. Granted, it's a core YZ, so it should be able to move a little bit faster, but what happened? Yes, it has a nice bed, it has some linear rails, it has a touchscreen interface with clipper. However, I already see as I'm using this touchscreen and going through the firmware and using this version of Clipper, I think this is gonna start to fall into the, some, the same pitfalls that the Elegoo Neptune 4s did, where they took the, Nep the Neptune 3 and just threw Clipper at it and threw better cooling, and it gets laggy and freezy sometimes. This, the user interface on this has already been a little bit touchy, and it's just, it's a little annoying to use. For $130 cheaper, you can get the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, which is the same build volume, just a little bit shorter, and I've been loving mine. It's been working great out of box for oh, well over a year now. Now you could try something like the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus that does have that high speed printing. I do know some people have been having better luck with the Neptune 4s now that there's been a firmware update. I use the Neptune 4 Max and I did not have a good time with that thing, but that might've been due to the firmware and me just not updating it in time and then it led to an issue. But I know people are running the 4 Pluses just fine. And it's gonna cost you the same amount of money and get you pretty much the same results for much cheaper. And it's gonna be a little bit more reliable. I'll be honest guys, I really wanted to like this thing. I wanted to give them another chance to impress me, but it, there's just nothing lack, there's nothing impressive about this printer compared to other things on the market. If you got it, I think you would like it. After a little bit of calibrating and dialing it in, there's nothing bad or seems like that's gonna break on it. It is a very good build quality. I've never had an issue with that, but I just think there's better options on the market right now. And I am excited to still test this. I am going to continue to use this, use it in some upcoming builds and projects, really try to calibrate it. I'm looking forward to it being available on Orca Slicer. This way I can really get into it and adjust things. But right now I'm just, I'm not, I'm not the happiest with it. It isn't a bad way to spend $430, but with things like the Elegoo Neptune 3s and the Ender 3 uh, S, S1 Pluses and other builds and printers that are about this same size, I'd be, I'd be more uh, inclined to go with those. But what do you guys think? If you have an X3 or an X4 Plus, or you are in the market for this, what do you guys wanna know about? Obviously, I know I didn't put this through the full ringer of testing, but if you guys have any comments and questions or concerns, please drop them down below. I will read them. This was a basic unboxing and overview and just my initial thoughts and opinions on it. I, again, I will be using it in an upcoming video once I'm able to really put it to the test, max out the build volume, do something big on it. But that's gonna be for a future video, so definitely stay tuned to that. And in order to catch that video and all my upcoming videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It helps me out and then you guys don't miss a video. But I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.